to the TV show 24. This is so weird. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. We're here for the Public Works and Finance Committee meeting. It is August 23rd, 2021, and we are, we have Art and Ann and myself here, as well as Bill Belnar and other staff people in the audience. So the first art uh, issue is the approval of the August 9th, 2021 uh, Public Works Committee minutes. Look good to me. Good to me. Mm -hmm. Approved. Consent agenda. Second one, Harvest Hills Lot 1, Block 1, PUD Development Agreement, Todd Red. All right, thank you. I'm not sure if I got this going, Bill. Let's see if it works in there. The, like on. A little, the on button's on. But. Oh. <laughs> Too close. See, he's been giving us some troubles lately. Gotcha. I figured I knew how to turn on the power button, but... It's not you. <laughs> it's good to know. Well, I can do the podium. We'll go through cool. back to the podium because it's not advancing. All right. Um, this is the development agreement for the Harvest Hills Lot 1 Block 1. Project location, property location is northeast corner of Mountain View and 3rd Street, as shown here on this figure. This was originally um, approved as Lot 1 Block 1, as the title suggests. Uh, for the Harvest Hills first edition, uh, final plat was approved in November of 2017. Um, what's being proposed at the moment is 15 individual lots uh, as a part of a planned unit development. The preliminary replat and planned unit development were approved by council on May 17th of 2021. Uh, the development agreement is our standard language that uh, specifies public improvements are required, specifies the security is required to guarantee the improvements and that a warranty period of a year uh, the improvements need to hold up is specified. It also requires as built constructed drawings um, be submitted by the developer uh, at, the end of, at the end of the construction phase. Uh, for this project, no phasing is being specified and there is language stating that no parkland dedication is required uh, as it was satisfied during the Harvest Hills first edition. Uh, so our recommendation is the approval of this development agreement. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Any major changes from the preliminary that we reviewed? No. Any questions? No questions. For me? Can it go on the consent agenda? Okay. Unanimous consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Number three. You're on again. Great. <laughs> Harvest Hills, Lot One, Block One, PUD, Momentation Agreement. Great, thank you. Yeah, this is the monumentation agreement for Harvest Hills Lot 1, Block 1. Uh, this is the city's standard language that requires uh, installation of interior pins for subdivisions, but because that's not always possible during construction, it allows for the deferral until the completion of, destruction, of construction. Uh, it does specify in the agreement that the work has to be done by a professional land surveyor. There's security in the agreement um, that provides money in case the developer is unable to set those pins. The city is able to use that security to do it to set them, and then there's a term uh, that the pins need to be set with when one calendar year of when the subdivision plat is uh, recorded. Again, this is the city's standard monumentation agreement language, and we recommend the approval. Sounds Any questions? Good. All very routine. Very routine. Uh, approved by consent up. agenda. Thank you. Don't worry, you only have two more to go. Yeah, Here thanks. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the Harvest Hills Second Edition Development Agreement. Yep. Thanks. This is the development agreement for the Harvest Hills Second Edition, mm -hmm. which is a property east of Mountain View uh, at the current eastern extents of Third Street. It's just to the east of the lot one block one that we talked about. Um, preliminary plat was approved by City Council in May of 2000, May of this year, May 17th this year. Uh, in it, it specifies a 9,083-square-foot cul-de-sac park uh, at the end of the proposed Amber Court. Uh, it also specifies a 10-foot right-of-way for a pedestrian pathway, which connects the cul-de-sac park uh, to Mosier Park. Um, again, development agreement standard language is in there. Uh, no phasing is being requested. And then the language uh, specifying the parks that we just talked about is in there. Uh, something that failed to get into the version that you were able to review this is a current look of Jansen Street, just north of the development. 
uh, approximately current off of Google Earth, and it's currently undeveloped. If I can go back a couple, you can see up the upper left-hand corner of the screen, the right-of-way for that Jansen Street has already been dedicated, but the improvements haven't been done yet. Uh, there's been lots of discussion over the years that the improvements for that portion of the street be completed as a part of this development. However, it failed to get into the version that I submitted to you. Um, so the recommendation for staff is to recommend approval of development agreement um, with uh, language being recommended to include those improvements on Jansen north of the proposed division. And you may recall that, that Jansen Street construction was a provision of a memorandum of understanding between the city and the prior developer, uh, Mr. Hoffman, in exchange for the city doing frontage improvements on Mountain View. Uh, the developer took on the responsibility for the construction of Jansen Street to connect the Mosier edition with the Harvest Hills edition. Um, so that's already been agreed to uh, back now about 10 years ago. Uh, so just formalizing that in the agreement is what we want to do. Any questions? Uh, just one. I forget because we were doing a couple of public hearings on this at the same time, but the uh, third street alignment that scoots around Mosier, uh, is that included in this or is that the other development? That's a Rolling Hills Ninth edition, so it's not incorporated in the Harvest Hills edition. Yep. So I was getting them confused because of presentation proximity. They're all tied together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm glad you included the Jansen Street because that's been... Uh, item of concern for a long time by providing more than one egress and entrance to the development there. So I'm glad you got that one in there. Thank you. Looks good to me otherwise. Any questions? No? Consent We're agenda? Good. Mm -hmm. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. You're on a roll. Here Last we go. For me. Yeah. Harvest Hill, second edition, monumentation agreement. Finally. Uh, Again, this is the, the same monumentation agreement uh, that we just discussed for uh, lot one, block one. The only difference is the security is set a little higher at $4,320 because it's more work than the previous one. Uh, other than that, the terms are all the same. So we recommend approval of the monumentation agreement. That'll stand for any questions. Yes, yes. Go for it. Go for it. Looks good. Again, consent, <laughs> consent agreement. Thank um, you. All three. Consent. We were swayed by your eloquence. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. Just take it home. <laughs> okay. Um, local professional services agreement for design services of the Public Avenue corridor safety improvement. Hello, everyone. Normally, I would have Elisa with me, but uh, her daughter just gave birth to her daughter so Fun. last Saturday, so That's she is, excuse. I'm by myself. Um, we thought that uh, five presentations on Public Avenue wasn't enough, so we needed to do one more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, as we presented just a few weeks ago, this is a, a safety project designed to improve the public street, uh, Public Avenue um, right away. And for this part of it, we are asking to sign the local professional services agreement which in this case, uh, through the selection process, we selected HMH Engineering, and then they proposed uh, a cost which was included in the packet. So um, that's as simple as it is. Are there any questions? Is there anything that I could answer for you? I have one question, and that is, is this the standard amount for overhead? Uh, yes, it is. So the 135%? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually on the low side. So if you look at, there's a comparison, uh, Terracon receives about 186% for their overhead. So, but if you look at the hours assumption, so it takes the um, individual hours of the, the people working and you see like 5394 for Sean Metz. You know, that is the M in HMH. He's the mm -hmm. principal engineer. So it, basically that just takes that number and then works it up until right. they have their overhead and their profit taken care of. So sometimes we do it the other way where we get a preloaded rate, but yeah, this is pretty standard. Okay. And, and the cost comes to 15%, which we try to stay within 12 to 15% for design. Okay. It was just that I was used to the university figures and this just seemed a little high to me, so it's good to ask. Um, yeah. Any questions? We need to proceed with public because that stretch road is a mess. Absolutely. Yes. Consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Amanda, you're on. The Vandal Town Block Party Alcohol Use Request. 
Good afternoon. So normally these types of requests go before um, administrative committee, but every once in a while, usually around this time of year, I get to present to Public Works about it. But um, before uh, the council committee uh, this afternoon is a draft resolution for the Vandaltown block party, um, where we would be requesting a temporary suspension of the open container law um, per the new entertainment district. Um, at this point in time, as Community Events Division handles the permits for these events, this is the first event that would be coming up um, with uh, the temporary suspension. Um, and so there is a draft resolution, which also includes a map of the event. Um, and staff recommends approving the, the resolution at this point in time. But I'm happy to answer any questions about Vandaltown Block Party. Um, as you all are aware, uh, it didn't go on last year because of the pandemic, and so we're hoping to bring it back this year. And it's a partnership between the City of Moscow, University of Idaho, and Moscow Chamber of Commerce. Any questions? I do, just because I was absent last week. So, um, so you both probably already know the answer. But so with the entertainment district, so um, for an event to proceed with this, it's just a temporary suspension under the new. Okay, perfect. During the event hours and the event footprint specifically. Is it open to community applications as well as city mm -hmm. ones? Okay, that was it then. So yep. it was more of a overall question. The timing was perfect. Mm -hmm. Looks Consent good. Agenda. Oh, I am all for it. Yes. Great consent. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are there any uh, reports? Megan Cherry. Yes. Well, um, like Amanda said, usually I do reports for admin, so you guys get the fun and pretty report for the day. You get the privilege. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Here we go. So. Um, yes. All right. Um, well, today I wanted to focus on the gallery and exhibitions news that we have coming out of the arts department um, presently. Um, and I um, wanted to start with kind of an overview of what we consider as gallery and exhibitions uh, programming for our department. Um, what you're looking at on the screen are the program graphics for each of those programs. Um, uh, two of them should be very familiar, the Third Street Gallery and Palouse Plein Air. The Box Gallery may be new to some of you, and there will be more about that um, uh, fairly soon. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about um, something that's really eased operations in all of these programs is um, our use of submittable, uh, which you've probably all heard me talk about at this point. It's a content management system that has really allowed us to um, work at a much greater capacity and um, to be a lot more efficient with our time. Um, and so that's, um, that's a, a feature that we've really appreciated being able to work with and it's, it's made these programs stronger. Um, okay, rolling into our individual programs, um, we have developed, a, 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 sorry, we are partway into our 2021 Third Street Gallery schedule. Some of these shows will be familiar to you. Um, you probably saw Dear Moscow, Silver and Gold. Control P is up uh, in the gallery right now. That's a, a printmaking exhibition um, that is uh, encompasses all uh, printmaking media from uh, the ancient woodblock to uh, contemporary digital printmaking. Um, the upcoming show for the fall is called Sculpted Spaces, Wild Lives. Um, this was a show that was originally conceived of as a um, an architecture show, and then we uh, caught wind that um, uh, City Supervisor Reedner really wanted to see a wildlife show, and so we brought that um, to the MAC when he announced his retirement because we just really need to get some ducks in the gallery before Mr. Reedner retires. Um, and so you can really look forward to some waterfowl and some duck jokes because um, I've been dream dreaming them up and I'm now unstoppable. So um, <laughs> that's our schedule for um, the rest of this year. Uh, you'll notice that we've got four shows for the year, and that's uh, that's become a, a standard for the gallery, a, a quarterly exhibition 
Commission's schedule. Um, and you'll also note that um, when we roll into 2022, uh, we've got our exhibitions timed for uh, to align with uh, the third Thursday art walk that is going to be starting in October on October 21st. Um, and so the one other note I wanted to make about these schedules is that we've standardized the process for uh, setting gallery schedules. It used to be that it was um, uh, not a set uh, exhibition slots and uh, MAC members were often reporting to us that they didn't know what show was going to be up and when and so we formalized a process whereby MAC members can advise on and then vote to approve a, a slate of exhibitions for an entire year. This also gives us more time to prepare and, um, and to get the public involved. One thing that I want to back up quickly to say about 2021 is um, we're only into our third show for the year and we've already involved uh, almost 100 artists in the gallery exhibitions, both online and in the physical gallery. So I think this method is, is proving itself to, to be a good way to engage with the community. Um, some of the shows that you see on this schedule are working titles. Um, other than Unfancy, we're feeling pretty attached to that one. Um, this will be Art of the Mundane. This will be Art of uh, the Poetry of Normal Things. Um, but then the others tend to develop through the Third Street Gallery subcommittee as they as they work through what they're what they're thinking about throughout the year. Um, the final show is uh, is uh, artwork by John Larkin and David Herbold. You see their work on the right hand side of the screen there, um, and we're really excited to have a two person show in that slot. So that will be the opening show for the Third Street Gallery for the Art Walk season in 2022. So really excited about that programming. Um, also, um, some of you may have been at AIC during uh, this really important and solemn ceremony that opened the Box Gallery. Um, the Box Gallery is a, as it says here in the Art Solution, um, it is a six- uh, it is a, a, a small gallery, a micro gallery made of six six-sided rooms. Um, it is right outside my office on the first floor. Um, this is a gallery that we created to essentially house artworks that are um, that are cute and fun and pretty and uh, need a place to go for the public to see them. Um, but it's also a little bit looser than the Third Street Gallery's uh, schedule. So there's um, there's an opportunity for people to slide in there for a couple weeks. Um, or for example, um, yeah. this was our opening show. Uh, we put some poems from the Moscow Poet Laureate in the gallery to open the gallery because uh, Susan Hodgen was just winding up her three-year term as Poet Laureate. Um, and so it's a, it's a nice little outreach gallery and, um, and it's, it's a little bit looser than our Third Street Gallery schedule. Uh, finally, in our exhibitions programming, we've got Palouse Plein Air. This is probably, um, this, we've got the most news on this one right now. Uh, the exhibition location has just been finalized. We've been working towards this for uh, many, many months, um, but uh, uh, as you know, the transition for U University of Idaho uh, with the Pritchard Art Gallery moving to the, the what is now the police station, um, there were all kinds of agreements that um, all parties went through to eventually agree that the University Moscow Contemporary and the City of Moscow are going to present this um, this exhibition as uh, as a three way partnership, which is pretty exciting. So I think everybody who's involved is really happy to to be able to put that forward to the community. So the exhibition will be at um, the newly renamed Moscow Contemporary um, on Main Street. Um, so between that location for the show and the really great uh, community partnership, we're pretty excited about this event. Um, during the week of plein air, I'm not sure how, mu how much everybody's familiar with this one, but I'll give you a little snapshot. Um, artists show up on the Palouse. We have people come from uh, uh, all over the state. Um, last year, we had folks from Boise to Bonners Ferry, for, um, people from Spokane. Uh, this year, we've got someone from Utah signed up. There's the, this. This is an event with a broad appeal. So they show up. They make paintings outside. Uh, you may see them out in fields making paintings on the Palouse. Uh, and then they are also with their registration. They also have uh, workshop and demonstration and juror lectures 
And then everybody who, who signs up to, to be part of it gets to show at this beautiful gallery on Main Street. So um, just quick registration update on that. We have been really pushing the numbers on this, and we've had a lot more excitement about this, this show and this event um, in, in recent years. So um, the uh, actually 2019 was our record breaker with 36 uh, registrations. We're already at 25, and we've got several weeks left to go. Um, Students have just started back, so we'll be seeing, um, I think we'll probably blow past that record as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all good news in the arts department. Um, and with that, I would love to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? I heard about the gallery opening and thought it was really lovely. The, the, the box, box gallery. gallery. <laughs> yeah. It was very. It was a very official ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We'll have we'll have copies of the art solution um, available to anybody who would like to have you know something like that in their office. And the whereases were quite good too. Oh yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. But we yeah, do I'm, have we do have a good time. I am glad to see the arts department being so vigorous and mm -hmm. pushing things out there. It's really good stuff. So, so thanks for heading that up. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I would second your comment about submittable. I've directed a lot of people to that or shared links from that website, and it's been great. Yeah, people. thank you. It's super user friendly. Actually, I did bring in Taylor's going to, I should hand one of these to Taylor's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I brought these for everybody. I didn't know. So, what you have is our famous, now famous, we've, we've run through a couple of rounds of printing on these. These are the state connected cards. This is what we use to alert the public to what we have available um, uh, through the arts department, including our artist directory, our mailing list, which has grown pretty incredibly in, in the last couple of years. And then all of our arts opportunities are located in one central location on Submittable. So um, when people ask us how to get involved in stuff, we just hand them the card. And um, and this worked really well. So, when it, so where are we going to publicize these? Where are they going to be held? Will they be in the chamber? Or just here these? In the city? Yes. Yeah, these are hotels, the chamber. They're, we we have spread these, these widely. So um, they're... Uh, obviously out in City Hall. Uh, we take them to all of our tabling events. Um, it's probably one of our most popular uh, takeaway cards at tabling events, so. You do a great job, thank you. Thank you. Okay, no other questions? Um, are there any staff reports? None this afternoon. Well, can we adjourn? We can. We can, we will, right. we are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.